Hello, dear friends. Today, I will be talking about senile dementia. Dementia is a general name for diseases and conditions in which memory is impaired, speech is impoverished, and the ability to think and make decisions is lost. If you rank all the conditions that haunt a person in old age, dementia is the worst enemy. By and large, it is the key indicator that determines the quality of life. Appearance, physical abilities, vascular and joint health, these are important, but secondary. The most important thing is to keep your personality as it was when you were young. I will tell you about the ways to prevent this terrible condition. You won't hear sensationalism, and you won't hear magic advice either. These will be available ways. Some of them have now been validated in research. For some, there is not enough information. It's up to you whether to use ways to prevent this terrible condition or not. I will only emphasize that it is necessary to start preventing senile dementia in middle age. When the first symptoms appear, it's too late to do anything about it. Those who have experienced dementia in relatives or acquaintances know how scary it is. Before your eyes, the person's personality changes, and he turns into someone else, not someone you knew and loved. Even worse, a person with dementia cannot care for himself and needs constant care. If the same thing happens with young children, we realize that it is not forever, that it will get easier after a while, and our care will bear fruit. In the case of senile dementia, the opposite is true. The person becomes a burden for relatives, a heavy burden that cannot be left behind, and at the same time does not give any hope. A person can be physically healthy, but unpromising as a person. Therefore, while we should care about our physical health, we should also pay attention to our mental health. Senile dementia does not develop all at once. It goes through several stages. The first stage is the absence of external manifestations at a time when irreversible changes are already taking place in the brain. Stage 2 is mild cognitive impairment. During this stage, the person develops abnormalities beyond the norms of age. The probability of this stage progressing to dementia is 10 to 15 percent per year. The third stage is dementia proper. The most common types of dementia are Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, dementia associated with the accumulation of Levi's cells, Parkinson's disease, and frontotemporal dementia. The causes of dementia are actively researched, and science does not stand still. Nevertheless, to date, there is no precise understanding of the mechanism of development of these diseases. But there is accumulated data from numerous studies on ways to prevent, slow down, or at least delay the development of senile dementia. So what are the methods? The first way is through nutrition. Good results have now been shown regarding the Mediterranean and the DASH diet. The abbreviation DASH stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. The DASH diet contains eight food groups, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fat-free or low-fat dairy products, fish and poultry, legumes and nuts, fats and oils, and sweets. It restricts food high in saturated fat, such as fatty meats and high-fat dairy products. A combination of these diets is also good. For nutritional factors, such as omega-3, vitamin E, and B vitamins, 24 randomized clinical trials showed no significant beneficial effect. Some studies have reported positive effects of vitamin D, B12, folic acid, vitamin B6, green tea extract, chromium picolinate, and beta-carotene. However, these data are few, and it is too early to say whether they are proven. Thus, only the Mediterranean and DASH diets can be discussed so far. At the same time, it remains unclear whether these diets affect nerve cells directly or if their effects are mediated by reducing other risk factors for dementia, high blood pressure, and excess body weight. The second way is physical activity. The mechanism by which physical activity affects nerve cell function is the release of neurotrophin substances. The major neurotrophin is the brain neurotrophic factor. Brain neurotrophic factor is produced in many tissues and becomes less with age. 
There is a relationship between the hippocampus volume, a subcortical structure of the brain, and neurotrophin levels. Physical activity increases the production of the brain neurotrophic factor and thus prevents the development of dementia. The third way is to reduce cardiovascular risk factors. In this case, the main goal is to decrease blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and prevent diabetes. High blood pressure is the cause of impaired blood circulation in the brain vessels, and this causes vascular dementia. Incidentally, vascular dementia ranks second among the causes of dementia after Alzheimer's disease. It is believed that vascular dementia develops due to damage to nerve cells in the brain. This damage occurs due to multiple tiny ischemic and sometimes hemorrhagic strokes. Therefore, it is necessary to control hypertension, high cholesterol, and diabetes as early as possible. The fourth way is to deal with depressive disorders. It is believed that episodes of depression causes changes in the cerebral cortex and subcortical structures, particularly the hippocampus. Depression also reduces the production of neurotrophins. All of this leads to dementia. Although these cause and effect relationships still need to be studied in more detail, it is believed that timely treatment of depression prevents the development of senile dementia. Psychotherapeutic techniques or pharmacology can be used to treat depression. The fifth way is to reduce stress. Chronic stress causes numerous changes in hormone levels and central and peripheral nervous system activity. Numerous studies have found a link between chronic stress and moderate cognitive impairment. The sixth way is cognitive training. There is such a concept as intimate reserve. This reserve is laid in youth when a person receives education and learns new skills. The higher the degree of learning, the higher the cognitive reserve. People with a high cognitive reserve develop intellectual disabilities later in life. It is because the brain in such people can compensate for the impairments that develop in old age. In simple words, it means that one should learn as much as possible starting from a young age and not stop throughout life. Although it is more difficult to study with age, one should overcome oneself, learn languages, and learn new professions and skills. The seventh method is brain stimulation by direct current and magnetic waves. The results of these effects are good, but not enough to be considered proven. The eighth method is the use of immunomodulators. The basis for their application is the control of tau protein. Tau protein is found in nerve cells, and it changes its structure in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Altered tau protein is associated with the development of dementia. Currently, a search is underway for vaccines that can tune the human immune system to clear nerve cells of altered tau protein. Drugs that contain immunoglobulins against tau protein are also being created. They are currently being actively tested, but there is still no long-term observations of their effect. Let me remind you that the strength of evidence has several degrees. The highest degree is that the phenomenon has been proven in randomized clinical trials. The weakest degree is expert opinion, that is, this doctor said this or that. Exactly this degree of evidence is often found in the controversy when commenting on ways to avoid dementia. According to this ranking, two strategies, physical activity and eliminating cardiovascular risks, have the most potent evidence. Less effective is this diet, depression control, cognitive training, and reducing stress. Weak, the use of brain stimulation and immunomodulators. In conclusion, although there is currently no cure for preventing senile dementia, it doesn't mean you should sit back and do nothing. There is a chance for dementia prevention, so we should take it. I wish everyone good cognitive health. Always for you, Dr. PopMed.